Hey guys, welcome to Scott's Reviews. If you haven't been here before, thanks for stopping by. And welcome to the new setup here I have going on, studio-wise, lights everywhere, that kind of thing. I filmed this thing this morning, and I had a little accident with this gimbal and camera. But uh, we're going to try to talk about that. And maybe the biggest part of this video is the tip of what I learned, what can happen with this gimbal and camera on certain movements. Uh, that will hit the release button and allow the camera just to fall off, which is not not good um, But I have them filming on with the pocket 2 from DJI um, This is because I normally would film with this big camera, but since I don't have this one This is the one I'm using as a subject. I need to find another camera to film with and this is pretty good setup um, With the lighting and every stuff. It's it'll be decent. It'd be decent, right? It's not gonna be like cinematic looking nice full-frame look but it's decent and this is I can even track myself if I want to I can go to my screen here I got a little monitor from the Wi-Fi signal I can track but it doesn't do a very good tracking job at all it kind of goes all over the place so we're not going to do that but it can if you want to I have the microphone from the courier's kit set up here attached to the microphone I just bought uh, to do some live streaming and stuff like that to get better audio but today um, we're talking about this a7 IV Crane M3 and do they work together nicely? Are they the perfect pair? One of my uh, viewers left a comment uh, asking about this balancing setup and how does it work and they're having trouble with it. I am no balancing expert at all. The best thing to do if you want to learn how to balance good is find another review where they talk about locking off each axis and then do it that way, which what I do. So I lock off this, lock off the back and lock off the side and I start with the front back first it's on right now put the camera straight up in the air balance that way and then finally balance the back I'm gonna talk about the one issue with this combination that everyone really wants to know about while you watch this review back here with the eye cup and the back axis is has very minimal play to get this Oops, GoPro still recording back here so back here you can see the very short window of where it can of clearance in the back i had to remove the eyepiece so remove this piece off of the sony and that's got to come off so and then back here i had to drop it to its lowest level on the plate in the back and then you have to just feather it up top for the front to back uh, balancing what I can't really get done is a good balance like this without hitting this back plate. If I, if I adjust it right now and move the camera forward this way, this direction, to get the balance correctly, um, it's going to hit this even further. So I'm letting the motors do a little more work than they should probably. If you have found a way to balance this better, please let me know but this is the best I could do so far getting it to balance but it also does work you can check your motors and you can see if one's working too hard or not here but even with that not being the perfect balance uh, it still is functioning well it's working directions flashlight mode I come up um, panning up and down that's right you just have to be careful it's so if you're buying a gimbal just for this camera and this camera only and you're looking to reuse it a lot and really fine-tune your gimbal skills I would say go for a bigger gimbal and have no worries a faster balancing setup when you're on the field trying to get it to get it to balance correctly. I am using the standard plate that comes with the Crane M3 for like a universal plate. They do make plates specific for your camera and I would probably suggest buying that. I should go and buy that for this camera pretty much right now uh, and then see if that makes a big difference. That is a good idea. I should do that. So that is the thing. You have to lower it down and then adjust back and forth and make sure you can clear, have clearance all the way in the back. It's going to be very, very, very close. 
but it can be done. Let me talk about what happened earlier this morning, which could be a good lesson for you guys if you have this set up. This red release button releases the connection of the plate to the gimbal. Basically, the camera will come off if you push this button. Um, and earlier, uh, I have not watched the footage yet, but we will watch it together. So let's roll the footage of what happened when I was working with the camera. Let's show you. All right, not, not a good thing to happen, right? Not a good thing to happen. <laughs> Thank God it was on this rubber mat and it was a very short fall. But if you were in a bigger walking down the street and that happened, you would not be pleased at all. Crashed with your camera, crashed with the lens. So a disaster. So what I found out, what I think I did, because um, I couldn't figure out, I knew I had it locked in. When I moved left or right like this, just like that. I mean, get See how I can touch right there. It touches the red button, and if you hit it just right, you can release your camera. Not a good thing to happen. Word of advice, if you're gonna have this set up here, obviously like this works great. Flashlight mode works great. Just be wary of doing this back and forth. I think I, I was in t lock mode. Yeah. So the camera's gonna stay nice and still, and I, Bam, hit that button right there. You can't see I'm doing that. Oh, I'm in lock mode, I can't move. <laughs> if you have it in lock mode, it makes it even more even more pronounced when you can hit that red button and which will release the camera and then the camera will fall. So, note to self, do not do that. All right, I am still able for different modes to do, let's say vortex. Close, right? Still able to do vortex I don't hear the motors purring too much, but it's a little more strain than most cameras. See, just like that, you can hit. All right, so let's wrap up my thoughts real quick. Is it the perfect setup here? Uh, no, but it works. And it also works with your cell phones, with GoPros, with uh, ZV-1s. It works with all the Sony uh, crop sensor cameras, the 6000 series that work great for that. So that's it. This is how I use it for the a7 IV. It works. It's not perfect, but it does work in the jam. And I'll go out and do some test footage for you to show what it looks like here at night. So enjoy the footage, and we'll see you on the next one. Tell me what you think of this setup. Christmas tree too much. I just like the Christmas lights. It makes me feel festive. I don't know. All right. Have a good one. Lazy, how lazy can I get? Look at that setup. Let's play a little Call of Duty.